Consumed moderately, alcohol can have healthy effects on your body. A drink once or twice a week can even strengthen your immune system. But when abused, alcohol is almost as addictive as cocaine and causes havoc in families and communities, leaving death and destruction in its wake. Classed as a depressant, alcohol slows down your vital functions as it courses through your veins, resulting in slurred speech, unsteady movement, disturbed perceptions and the inability to react quickly. Namibians have a reputation of irresponsible drinking and an even graver reputation for road accidents and gender-based violence. Therefore, the government has recently made the laws regarding the sale of alcohol in residential areas far more stringent. With us in studio is Mr. Horst Heimstedt from Seif, Namibia, who will speak to us not only about the severe and irrevocable dangers of alcohol abuse, but also the efforts made by government and the private sector to curb irresponsible drinking. With us in studio is Mr. Horst Heimstedt from Seif, Namibia. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening, viewers. Um, now, I don't think that we need to explain to our viewers that we have a bit of a drinking problem in Namibia. Um, and I think we all know that it's, there's a strong correlation between high road af uh, traffic accidents um, and the abuse of alcohol. Um, but before we get to that, I just want you to explain to us a little bit. There are a lot of physical um, detriments to the body if you overuse alcohol or if you abuse it. There's anything, anything in life, if it's not balanced, it becomes a problem and it normally ends up in a health problem. If you eat too much, you've got a health problem. If you drive too far, it's in a car. If you over speed, you've got, a, you've got a health problem at the end of the day because you ended up in a, in a crash. So yes, alcohol is the same. The difference with alcohol is it does affect your brain. It does change your mind. So with every drink you take, you actually do change your behavior. And this is where pe some people cannot stop once they have reached the limit of three um, beers or three standard drinks. And that's where it becomes dangerous to, to society at large. It is really more about the person than anybody else. I always say, why do you have a party where you get drunk? Who's having the party, you or the alcohol? Mm. Uh, for me, it's the alcohol. Whereas, yes, alcohol relaxes you. It gives you in a joyful mood um, if, you, if you drink it responsibly. Once you're over the responsible drinking, you start behaving properly. Yeah, and I think like with most things, as you said, it's really the overuse, but um, alcohol is almost as addictive as cocaine. Um, so that really, I think people underestimate the risks of drinking too much. If one or two drinks, you know, really enhances your immune system. Um, physically, let's talk about blood pressure, liver disease things like that. Um, are people who overuse alcohol more prone to these things? Yes, if they abuse it. Yes. Again, it, it, it stays on the abuse. Yes. Um, if responsible drinking says to you, you should be drinking three standard drinks, which is in, in our terms when we talk about it, is it a dumpy yes. um, at a 4% alcohol. Okay, so most of our dumpies, which we have, are already above 4%, and you shouldn't be drinking more than three a day for six days a week. You should be able to say no to alcohol at least once. Then, then you know you're pretty much all right. Most or many people which don't regard themselves as a problem drinker, they cannot go without a drink at night. So that is, that's starting to become a problem. Um, a very early stage of alcoholism, you could call it. Uh, if you go to the AA, they will tell you a very different story. If you crave a drink at any time, they, they will tell you. But we must also look at the history of alcohol. Alcohol is coming, the earliest history recorded is 4,000 before Christ. And even then, the Greek god of wine said, there is three drinks should be drank. The first one is to relax, the second one is to enjoy, and the third one is to go home. Um, and then, and you, you mentioned that the, the early phases of alcoholism, um, I think also a lot of people don't realize that alcohol dependency to a large extent is genetic as well. Um, so if your parents were heavy drinkers, chances are that you need to be, you know, even more safeguarding yourself and be even more cautious about it. Um, uh, let's talk about alcohol dependency in teenagers. 
Teenage drinking, that's also quite a big problem. It's, it's teenage drinking to the industry is, is a big problem. We, d we do not support teenage drinking at all. We believe that alcohol should be only drunk once you're 18. And the main reason for it, the scientific research which says your brain hasn't de developed properly yet, up to the age of 17, people differ, some as 19, but in general, by 18, your brain has developed. Um, and you, you cannot cope with the change which happens in your brain at the time. And, and, and that's where the yeah. alcoholism is coming and from. And it stops your brain from growing. I think the young, the young kids don't realize that as well. By partaking in alcohol so early in your life, you are really stopping those crucial times of development um, for your brain. If I may correct you, yes. if I may point yes, out to you. Yes, please do, yes. Drinking with young people, underage people, comes from parents. It starts at home. In, in some cases, it starts as early as baby being a baby, uh, where the mother start, drank while she was pregnant. Then the baby is born. The mother gives it something to soothe the baby. Then it goes on. It's normally family and immediate family and also extended family, which introduces the child to alcohol. Children look at their ch parents and they say, this is what my parents are doing, and they're having a good time. They're talking about it. They're extensively talking about it. So this is cool. I must do the same. So parents, please, there, there's a big issue with you introducing the alcohol. Scientific research, again, um, children which go with the age of 18 into um, tertiary in institutions for education normally end up drinking heavily for a short time span. It's between the age of 18 to 24 roundabout, when they're finished with university, whatever they are going to. Uh, but children which go into university or tertiary education without drinking, don't, don't go over to drinking. It's those which go in and have been drinking as teenagers, have been introduced to it, they actually go overboard so, so by, 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 by being a, a young person, you know, under the age of 18, by going to a party, by indulging, doing it regularly, you are actually setting yourself up for addiction. That's, co that's yes. correct. Yes. Um, the chances that that person which is mm. doing it before the age of 18. Mm. And we have got children which do it very early. I mean, we, we, we are busy with a schools project where they indicate to us that the child is 12, 13 when they start doing it. Mm. Um, but the, the possibility that that person will become an addict is, oh, is great. big, yeah. Um, and before we move on to, you know, um, the stuff that you are doing as SAFE and the stuff that the government and stakeholders are doing to curb irresponsible drinking, let's just talk a little bit about the psychological effects. Now, one drink of alcohol has a stimulant effect. It makes you feel better. But as soon as you drink three or four more drinks, it becomes depressant. Um, you lose your lack of judgment. And I think people, you know, you automatically think, OK, if I, if I uh, drink, I can't drive. But there are other things that heavy drinking is also tied to in society, like um, the expression of violence, for instance, um, and unsafe sex, even. Um, could you tell us a little bit about that? Hmm? The, yes. Alcohol changes the brain. And it's a full stop. Yes. Okay, so you start, you start drinking in, in the aspect of violence. You've had the thought of doing something to somebody before the time. The thought doesn't, isn't aggravated by alcohol. But because your brain is now affected by the alcohol, you forget the risks involved with Executing getting violent the crime, yes. or raping somebody or hitting your wife at home even or whatever. Even having unprotected sex. Even have, having unprotected sex. Mm. Um, for that reason, you now, the brain has changed and it's forgot that there's risks involved and then you go and do it. Okay? The unprotected sex story is, is a bit of a different story. Um, males are always willing to have sex at any time. Uh, females are the reserved ones when it comes to sex. Alcohol changes the mind of the female, and that's why the female actually aggravates the male to become sexually active. So, so well, either there's way, it messes with that dynamic. Two to tango. <laughs> yes. All right, fantastic. Um, now let's just, okay, wait, let's quickly have a break. <laughs> After the break, we will talk about the recent amendments to the Liquor Act. To 
try and curb Namibia's drinking problem, the government has recently amended the country's Liquor Act of 1998. The new laws imply stringent rules for, in particular, Shabin owners. Shabins are now strictly forbidden in a number of locations and some members of the public are outraged. It is estimated that there are 25,000 Shabins in Namibia, selling alcohol at all hours of the day. Many Shabin owners feel that their livelihood will now be at stake, as many of them will have to close their businesses. After the break, we speak to Horst Heimstedt from SAIF about the misconceptions and realities of these amendments and whether they will be enforced by the National Security Services to ensure safer neighborhoods. The amendments to the Liquor Act. Now, you guys were stakeholders, a part of this, I'm sure. Yes, we have been consulted uh, at some time ago. Um, the, the progress has been very slow. We have been consulted, and as we understand, it's been widely consulted about it. Uh, for us, the amendments as they are there, uh, no, no license in, in a residential area, uh, not within 500 meters of schools, churches, or hospitals, these, these are amendments which we actually welcome. We, we do not believe a drinking place has got a place in a residential area. Um, there are business zoned areas where you should be doing drinking. If you want to go out, you go in a business zoned area. Uh, we also do believe that schools are affected by alcohol and of our policy of underage drinking, we don't believe that they should be exposed too much to schools. Uh, let's talk about SAFE first of all though. Um, who are your stakeholders? I mean, what is your, your role in promoting safe drinking? The SAFE, uh, believe it or not, is, a, is the alcohol industry. It's the producers and distributors of alcoholic beverages, the formal producers and distributors of alcohol beverage. Uh, Namibia Breweries, SAB Miller, Distel, House of Wines. So there's a whole list of us uh, which, which got together. Why, why are we saying you need to, alcohol is not produced to be abused. Alcohol is produced to be part of a balanced lifestyle. As you've said before, it can really increase your lifestyle drastically if you use it responsibly. One of the main reasons is it eliminates or it, it reduces stress levels. And so we know what stress, what havoc stress causes in, in the body. So one of the main reasons why alcohol and under controlled circumstances is good for you is the stress level. Uh, most probably the biggest reason. Mm. Yeah. But I mean, for, for SAFE, if we, if we look at the breweries in 2014, they recorded a profit of almost $300 million. So my automatic reaction would be the amendments to the Liquor Act um, would curb business. I mean, there are 25,000 Shabins estimated in Namibia. A lot of these business will be or businesses should be or would be closed. And would that not be detrimental to, to your stakeholders? The industry has got the policy that let that be our problem. All right. uh, because we know as an industry that there is a problem out there with abuse of alcohol mm. and that it does destroy families and that it does um, uh, hamper development in, in Namibia. Mm. And therefore the industry is saying let that be our problem. So you guys are really, um, as the providers of alcohol to society, you are really being responsible um, in your business dealings. No that's, that's why SAIF is in existence. Yes. That's why a lot of money goes into SAIF. That's why we mm. participate in programs like road safety programs, uh, underage drinking programs. So, uh, yes, we, we're serious about it. Moving Shabins out of residential areas, I mean, a lot with the smoking law as well. There was a big hoo ha, and um, it didn't seem to really be implemented. I mean, I still see people smoking in restaurants. Um, so really, you know, is this just another big policy change to create PR around the issue? This for us as the industry is, is really where the concern is. Uh, currently, we, we estimate that above 80% of all the Shabins don't have a license. Uh, the change in, in the act really comes from the town hall talks which the president had with the community. First of all, if if the community is that serious about the problem, why do they support 
Shabins in the area. If the community wouldn't sh support the Shabin in the area, they wouldn't be in existence in that area because they, they wouldn't make money. Secondly is how are we going to enforce this whole issue of having no Shabin in the area if we now already sitting with a problem that 80% or more has got no license. We also coming back to the problem of what the Liquor Act is saying currently. No noise, no pollution, no under 18s. These are all written up in the Liquor Act as is. They're not being implemented. Opening hours. Uh, th these are the big issues the community has about the whole Shabin issue. We're not implementing them. Now we want to go and we want to prohibit people from having operating in, in, a, in the um, residential area. So what are we really saying? We're going to force everybody mm, to operate close. without a license, mm -hmm. which, is, which is of a concern to us. Mm, all right. So really, um, I mean, as much as, again, we are putting onus upon government in the state to solve this problem, um, you're saying that it is as much the community who need to step up and, you know, be accountable for these businesses operating in their spaces. It's not only government's problem. Mm. It's, it's definitely not, we would like to see the approach by a civil society, business and government to resolve that issue. The government alone cannot make regulations and rules and whatever and say, okay, now we're going to resolve this issue. It's not going to work. The community must agree to it and the industry must be able to, to force the whole thing through, um, which, is, which is in the commercial industry, it is really helping already. We have got restrictions that we cannot sell um, alcohol to people which don't have licenses. The, the industry only sells alcohol to people which have licenses directly from our depots. Yes. Whereas the problem starts with the other organizations which are involved. They, they couldn't care about it at all. They, they go out and they sell as much as possible. It is a very competitive market because you have got so many liquor outlets or not li drinking outlets, let's rather say, out there. And, and that's why it becomes competitive. So anybody is doing anything just to make a little bit of extra buck. There is a lot of education missing. Um, we are involved in educating Shabin owners on responsible serving, responsible drinking. The impact which we are creating is, is a little bit of a question mark to us because the competition which is out there and the enforcement is not, is not part of the whole thing. And, and we believe if we had better enforcement, we would also be able to control it better. Uh, although the Shabin Association, the NARTA, the Namibia Retail Traders Association, will tell you that their members are really sticking to the rules and regulations. Um, so are we now saying that only the unlicensed Shabins are, are the problem? No, it's not true. Because the licensed Shabins, I have got a license, now I can do what I want. So the unlicensed Shabin, yeah, the unlicensed Shabin is, is saying, I must behave myself, I must keep the police out of it. Where the license should be and say, oh, well, I can do what I want, I've got a license. Mm. Now, despite um, all of us having to stick together to fight alcoholism and binge drinking, um, my question to you would obviously be somebody who's finding themselves in a predicament where they were perhaps maybe moderate drinkers and now they see that they do have a problem. Um, what are the options for these people? Also, very limited. Mm. Um, we have got our government. Um, Real rehabilitation centre, uh, but it, it is limited and it is too limited. I've, I've looked online and actually online they've got very very nice programs online where you can follow and, and become part of it. Okay. So that would be my first recommendation to somebody now. Um, and, and I think also speak out to know that you know the alcohol can be dangerous if it is misused. Um, and just create a sense of responsible drinking. Yes, that, that, that is the industry side yes. um, where we, we're trying to promote that. On the, on the side of somebody who is in trouble, admit that you are in trouble. Uh, I think that's the first point of change wherever you go, is admit I have got a problem. How can we resolve this problem? And 
It takes a lot of dedication, it takes a lot of willpower, but it can be done. Uh, we know of quite a few people which have been there. Um, younger people which, which abuse alcohol. Uh, we don't support binge drinking at all. Binge drinking means more than five standard drinks a, a night. Uh, we obviously don't support drinking and driving at all or driving under the influence at all. So there's a list which we don't support. Uh, um, the fetal alcohol syndrome, drinking while you're pregnant, we don't support it all. Fantastic. Uh, Thank you so very much for your efforts. Um, I'm sure we will see a lot more of you now that the amendments are taking place. Viewers, that's all for this evening. If you have any comments or remarks on today's story, SMS us at 555.